G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.NET 2013 video. In this series, we are going to have a look at databases. In the next four or so videos, we're going to cover purely just that. So this video is completely intended for beginners with databases. I am doing this video because I expect some people are coming into this topic with zero knowledge at all. So if you're one of those people, I expect you to stick around, have a listen, have a go. If you've got Microsoft Access on your computer, crank it up and try it out. However, if you understand about databases, what they are, how they work, and what the language is, go straight to the next video. We're actually going to be making a VB project and connecting to it and feeding data from it and adding data to it. But for right now, there's a couple of things I want to cover. First of all, what is a database? How do they work? And why the hell you should use one? So first of all, what is a database? Well, it's a file where you can store multiple forms of data, very similar to a class, okay? But it can be related and have a lot more, I suppose, readability and redundancy to it, which is really, really good. You actually communicate with a database, not via the file itself, but via its database management system, also known as a DBMS. Now, an example of a DBMS is one sitting right in front of you right now called Microsoft Access. Some very common ones otherwise are Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, or if you want to spell it out, it's MySQL, Oracle, or SQLite. They're all different examples of database management systems. Okay, And their job is to basically be in between your program and the database file itself. They will take your questions, your queries, and all of your jobs, perform the actions on the database, and handle all that stuff for you. So why the hell should you use one of these database management systems or a database? Well, because they're quick. They allow, they automatically save your data. And for the most part, things are backed up and managed for you. You can relate different types of data so you don't have to type in extra information. And if you're not typing in extra information, you've got less redundant data and it's a lot more accurate what you've got. So there's a lot of bonuses for using databases. And if you're going to use a program which has lots of different bits of data, and you're still using text files, then you need to move away and start learning databases. Before we go into Access, what it's all about, and creating a database from scratch so people can actually see what's going on, I want to talk a little bit about the language or how you communicate with databases because you don't do it through commands. You do it through a language called SQL, and this is what this is all about. So talking to databases, if anyone knows anything about it, you'll know that straight off the bat, you use a a language called SQL, a structured query language to communicate with the database. So every action you want to perform, you use SQL, whether it's to insert data, delete data, modify data, query the database for different bits of data, this is the language that you utilize. Okay. Now here's the hard part though, there is no general format. So most of the languages you'll find are almost identical. So if you're using Access or MySQL or Oracle, most of the commands for SQL will be the same. But because people like to put their different flavors on things, you're going to find that SQL differs depending on what you're going to be using. Now, we're going to be using Microsoft's SQL language, right? because that's what, or JET SQL, which is what Microsoft uses in Access to communicate with their databases. Right. Let's have a quick look at an example of one of this, so on. If you wanted all of your data, or if you wanted all of your students from your database, you would send the command select asterisk from students. So what that's actually saying, select is the get command, basically. How, uh, asterisk, retrieve all of the fields, and we'll talk about fields very soon. From students says, get it from the table called students. And that's going to get all of the data and all of the fields from our table students. That's a quick, quick question just like that. Now, obviously, there's more you can do with this language. It's not just getting data from a database. You can also insert data. You can update it, and you can delete it using these different four commands. Now, these aren't just the only commands. These are just the basic ones I'm going to cover in the next couple of videos. There's lots of other ones, such as join and create and drop and things like that. So these are just the basic ones we're going to look at right now. So let's have a look at the select command and what he looks like in a bit more detail. So this is the one I showed you just before, select the fields from the table. Now you've actually got a bit more power than that. So let's say you only wanted to select students who were born after 1998. Well, you'd use the second version. Select asterisks from students where date of birth is greater than 1998. All right? And that's just a basic one there. 
To make it even more complicated, you can do these kind of ones. So you select the fields from a table and you can join them onto different tables with related data. Now we're not going to get to this bad boy until a bit later, but this is where the power of databases start coming in. All right, let's move on to the next one. The insert command is pretty straightforward actually. You insert into a table the fields that you want to insert and then the values of those fields. Pretty damn straightforward. The update's quite easy. Update the table, set your field to a new value, and you can also do multiple fields where a certain condition is met. So you could say, update my students, set their first mark to 500, where the student's name equals John. And every single John will receive their first mark as 500. Okay, moving along from that one, and the delete one's very straightforward. Delete from the table where student equals John. Okay. That's a really rough as guts introduction to SQL. We're going to do a lot more, as you can probably imagine, as we get into this thing. But right now, I'd like to show you how to create a database from scratch just using Microsoft Access. We'll use VB later, probably about the fourth video we do that. And we're going to create a little student database where we can put in some marks and things like that. Now, let's click on that. I'm going to name my database Student Marks. Now, if you haven't got the same interface as me, I'm using Microsoft Access 2013. You may have the blank desktop database down the bottom right, where you've got, um, if you've got 2010 or even earlier than that. So I'm just calling my student marks. I'll save it to the documents folder because I know where that is. And let's click create. All right. This bad boy has presented us with an empty database. Table 1 doesn't even exist in our database yet because it's not a saved table. Now, here's the interesting thing. I have to save the table to create it. However, the database will automatically save any data that I input into the database. So this little save button here is not for saving the database. It is for saving the table that I'm working on at the moment. So once this is created and the database is saved, I will not click that save button anymore for this table. All right, and you'll see that in just a little bit. So first of all, you'll see that you've got ID column and a click to add column and then you've got these grids going across okay which you would call rows or even records okay each one of these bad boys is called a record and each one of these columns is called a field okay and each time they no I won't say that <laughs> moving along from that let's say the first table I want to create is for my students and the second table I want to create for my marks so what I can do then is I can enter one student and then I can enter multiple marks for that one student. Now what you've got to think of is, alright, what type of data am I going to store in this table? So initially I want to store the student's name and just their date of birth. The marks will come in the next table that I create. So for right now, what we're going to do is click to add. And now we have to pick a data type. Very similar to variables in Visual Basic, you must have a name and you must have a data type. First pick the, pick the data type and then we'll pick the name straight afterwards. So let's say, for example, I'm going to do their first name and then their last name. So I'm going to click short text and we'll go first name. We'll do the same thing for the next one, short text, last name, press enter. And then the date of birth. Let's just do something different. So I'm going to click date and time for this one and go date of birth. Click off because I don't want to add any more there. All right. Now one thing to note, this row here is empty. It's a brand spanking new row. And there's no data in it, as you can probably imagine. It's ready for me to type stuff in. That's why it says new on the left here, and it's got a little asterisk as well. Now, let me quickly talk about this ID guy. You should never, ever delete him. You should always have an ID field for a couple of reasons. Let's say I've got two students in my school. Let's just add one in for the moment. Let's say the first student is going to be Bobby. Bob. And when was he born? Last Sunday. Sounds fine. So you can see that ID was just set to one, and it's very important. Let me talk about, let's say I've got two students named Bobby Bob. Okay, first name is Bobby, last name is Bob. They were both born on the exact same day. There is no way to uniquely identify that student. If they've got the exact same name, how the heck am I supposed to figure out which Bobby is which? All right. So in this particular case, this is where the ID comes in. Every time you create a new record, in your database, it will automatically increment or add one to the ID field. So the next one I type in will be ID2. So let's do that. Let's go Jill Stevenson, born September 6th. That's fine. You can see that's just gone to two. 
then always should have an ID field because it is the primary key of your table. Now the primary key must be unique and it must have a data value. So what's so important about that is because when I create my next table and start adding in marks, I'm not going to be referring to the student's marks as Bobby Bob's marks or Jill Stevens's marks. I'm going to be referring to them as student one and student ID two. Okay? Because not only is it quicker just to use a quick number, but it also means that every single student is going to have a unique identifier. Okay? If you ever studied here in Australia, you would have been given a unique student number to do your exams, and that's because of this because there might be a lot of people around the state with the exact same name as you. Okay, so they use an ID instead. So let's just quickly, this is done. So what I'm going to do is come up and click Save on this bad boy. And now it's asking me for a table name, so let's go Students. Done. On the left you can see it's saved the students. And I'm going to, not close it, sorry, I'm going to create a brand new table. So let's go up to Create. Let's click on Table. And we're back to, to Step 1. We've got the Table 1, ID, and ready to add in some fields. So let's click on this guy here, and we're going to think about, all right, this is going to have a mark for every single student, and it's going to tell me where that mark came from. So the first thing I should do is make a field, which is going to be for the student. Before I go too quick, as I said before, we're going to use the ID field to talk about the students. Now you can see it's a number, so let's go and click on number, and I like to call it like this. I like to have student underscore ID, so I know it's coming from the student table. Okay, the next thing is we're going to have a name for the assessment, so assessment name, and then finally the mark they got. Done. So to actually use this kind of thing, what we do is add in, let's add in a couple of records for Bobby Bob, but obviously you wouldn't put Bobby Bob in the student ID field. We're going to use his ID number, which is 1. So let's go 1. What's the assessment name? Well, it was assessment 1. What mark did Bobby get? Let's say he got 85. Now, let's add another mark for Bobby, which is number one. Assessment two. He got 64. He bombed out on that one, unfortunately. Bobby, in an exam, got a 21. Terrible effort. So, that is how you have multiple marks for one student at a time. Let's quickly add some for Jill. Let's say for Jill's assessment, one, she got 15. She sucked. For Jill's second assessment, she got 46. Not bad. And for exam, if I can spell, she mashed it. 98. Don't you hate those students who crap in the assessments for great exams? You may not know because you're not a teacher. But anyway. So, let's save up this table. Let's call this bad boy Marks. And we're done. So we've created data in both of these tables, but right now they're slightly unrelated. The idea is there. We've got the idea that we want the student data to be there, but we haven't actually specified which table the original information comes from. Okay. Now this is not something that we'd be able to do in Visual Basic, but I'm going to show you the end result, which is the SQL statement that can come from Visual Basic. Let's close these two um, tables and let's create what's called a relationship between them. Come to database tools, click on relationships, and I'm going to add them students first. So you click on students, come down to add, and then the marks. Cool. And we're ready to go. So these represent all the fields, as you can probably tell, inside of our tables. And I want to relate the student ID with this student ID field over here. Now you may notice the little key symbols, that just represents a primary key of that table. So what I'm going to do is drag this ID on top of student ID over here. Now it's a really good idea to tick these two boxes, Enforce Referential Integrity, Cascade Update Related Fields. Okay, it just means that the data is going to be close-knit and it's going to be really tightly related when you do this relationship. So once you've got those ticks, click Create. If you get any errors at that point to say that the data types don't match or something like that, Check out your data types for those different fields because to have an ID field relate to another field, they need to be of the same data type. You can't have an, I, an integer relating to a string. That just doesn't even work. Okay? You can, have, however, have a string relating to another string. That's fine. 
However, it's good to have an integer with another integer. And you can see this little line representing our new relationship, and the little symbols there are one to many relationship. That means we have one student ID, such as Bobby, who has many marks. All right. All that aside, I think we're done. Let's click the Save button and close this guy. What we're going to do now, if we open up the student table, we've got a new column, which is over here on the left, ever since we created that relationship. Click on this bad boy, and you can see that Bobby's got three marks. Bam, bam, and bam. How cool is that? Pretty easy done. Now, before I finish up, I'm going to show you one last thing. We're going to set up a query or an SQL statement that will join Bobby's name and date of birth to his marks. So let's quickly do that now. If we go create query wizard, we're not going to do a design one. We'll wait until later. We're going to go simple query. Okay, first of all, we want the first name, last name, and date of birth. So click one, two, three, change the table to marks. And I don't want the ID. What we do want is the assessment name and mark. And I'm just going to click finish at this point. This is all the data I want. And we'll see in our query, if I double click on it, oh, sorry, he's already open. Bobby Bob, date of birth, and there's his assessment marks. See, all the data has been related together now. Same for Jill. There's Jill's three marks and her kick-ass exam mark all together. Now, if you wanted to actually see the guts of this, a student query is actually, this is the end result of the query. That isn't actually the question. To have a look at the question, down at the bottom right, we've got an SQL button. If you click on this guy, that's what it looks like. Okay? So it looks very similar to what I had in the slideshow. We select the fields that we want. There are the four fields from the students table and the inner join basically is the relationship. It's grabbing the marks and adding it on top of the student data. So it's matching the student ID with the marks student ID and adding that information together. And that's pretty much it. We don't have to do much with this guy. He's just done. We can go back to the table view and have a look at it and play around. If you're new to databases, I'd really recommend you start your own database, play around with some things, add in some data, create some queries, and just generally have a go. All right? I'm not going to worry about forms or reports in this particular case because that's pretty specific to Microsoft Access. I am, however, going to leave you be. We're going to use this database in the next tutorial to connect to it and get information and put information into it. So if you want to keep a copy of this guy, I recommend you would. But before you do, have a play around with Microsoft Access and give it all a go. So I hope this video was helpful to you for learning databases for the very first time. But this is Nick Dingle signing off. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to make a program, we're going to connect to a database, and we're going to get this data into Visual Basic. So until then, put some comments down at the bottom or suggestions or fixes or likes. I'd love to see some of those. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.